over FL, right? Where are those radio stations located at? Well, let's see, WFMT is 98.7. Uh, the loop, I guess, is 99, uh, 90... 97.9. 97, and I knew it ended at 9. And the max, I forgot, 102. XLC, XLC is 102.3, and the drive is 94.7. I think, I don't know. Um, maybe that's WLS's only station, but you know, they're all odd numbers. They all end in a odd decimal. Okay? And the actual allocations are. 88 is just the lower end of the band. The first station said actually 88.1, and then the next one said 88.3, and then 88.5. So how far apart are each one? There are two tenths of a megahertz. That's 200 kilohertz. How does that work out? Well, here's your center frequency. 98.7 for WFMT, one of my favorites. I have more classical music. And this thing is going to deviate how much? Well, the FCC's already said the number. They said 75 kilohertz, and they did that because of the reasons I want to point out. Um, and TV broadcasting, where they also use a, an FM, well, I'm sorry, old analog broadcasting, you know, which we used to do before we had digital, uh, it was 25 kilohertz. It doesn't really matter too much. On the two-way radios, we use the cam radio. If you're on VHF, it's typically 5 kilohertz. If you're on UHF, it's typically 12 and a half kilohertz. Um, it's set to control the bandwidth. So the FCC said, well, we want really high quality broadcasting and good noise and unity. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow 75 kilohertz. And TV, uh, excuse me, the radio stations, music is going to go up to 15 kilohertz. Why? Because that's considered to be most of what the human's hearing range does, or a few people that think they can hear up to 20, but the content of music, even with the high pitch content in it, really goes much above 15, and if it does, you don't hear it very well. Your, your hearing rolls up pretty quickly after 15, so what is 15 kilohertz? That's the highest frequency content. The frequency is the deviation rate. The, amount, the amplitude becomes the deviation. That's how far we go. It's loudest, it will be 75 kilohertz above and below. It'll swing back and forth between those walls. And how fast will it swing back and forth? Up to 15,000 times. Okay, so 15 kilohertz is the deviation rate. So, um, 75 kilohertz is the deviation. Multiply each one by two. 2 times 15 is 30, 2 times 75 is 150, add them together and you get what, 180? How wide is that channel? 200? Remember, every odd decimal. Fits perfectly, you got 10 kilohertz of guard band on either side so the two stations don't overlap. And that's pretty much the plan for how FM radio is laid out. And that's what you have with an FM signal. You've got the problem where you have the advantage that your signal has a constant amplitude. And if it has a constant amplitude and you're in a noisy environment, the noise is down here, as long as your signal rises above noise, your receiver has a so-called capture effect. It will look for the highest amplitude signal. It will latch onto that, and the noise will be essentially buried underneath it. That is why FM sounds so clean and so noise free is because if the FM radio signal is higher in amplitude than the noise, you don't hear the noise. It's called, that condition is called full quieting. You'll get used to that term because when you operate on your two meter FM handheld um, Receiver. When you get your technician grade license, one thing you'll ask the person you're talking to is, How's my signal? And they'll say, Full quality, which means I hear you and I don't hear any noise. If it's not quite full quality, they'll say it's noisy. But that's the beauty of FM, and that's why it's used. 
Why would it not be used? Because it takes up more space. So the reason the FM signals are up here, where the center frequency is about 100 megahertz, and the AM band is down here where the center frequency is only 1 megahertz, is when you get up higher in frequency, uh, it's easier to get a bigger piece of the spectrum. I'm going to talk about that when I talk about spectrum um, breaks. The lowest frequency is called low frequency, then the middle frequency is called middle um, mid frequency, and the next thing you heard of is called HF, high frequency. Then you've heard of VHF, very high frequency, UHF, ultra high frequency. Remember from your TV that had a VHF and a UHF band, channels 1 through 13, channels 14 through 83 were UHF. Every one of those segments of the spectrum is 10 times wider than the segment below it. Every one above that is 10 times wider. It's just the nature of physics that it works like that. So. As you go up, the FM band, which is in the VHF band, is in a space that's 10 times wider than, it's actually 100 times wider than what's in the AM band, which is in the medium band. It's below the high frequency band. And that's why this guy is 100 megahertz faster than that guy is, and it's easier to grab <coughs> 200 kilohertz of bandwidth for each station, where in this space they only get 10 kilohertz. 10 here, 200 here, so you get uh, 20 times as much. And you can actually go wider. Um, that's one of the reasons why satellites and other uh, modern communication systems that handle high volumes of traffic operate in the microwave range, because now you're going beyond ultra-high frequency to super-high frequencies, and that's 10 times as big a space as ultra-high frequencies. Let me give you one simple example. EMs love to use in the, HF, uh, in the VHF band 2 meters. There's another one called 220, but they get up to, um, actually, let me think about that for a second. Um, yeah, 220 is still considered VHF. When you get above 300 megahertz, uh, you're in an area called UHF. The UHF band we tend to use is a band called the 440 band. It actually goes from 420 to 450, but the hands just use the top 10 megahertz called 440 to 450. That band that starts at 420 and ends at 450 is 30 megahertz wide. The entire HF band, everything from zero up to the top of the HF band is only 30 megahertz. So as you can see, we've got one band that's equal to everything in the in two spectral slots lower combined. That's how things get very big very quickly when you go up in frequency. Things just spread out. So you get up in the microwave frequencies where you have millimeter wave, meaning the wavelengths are that small. And your frequencies are that high, they're in the upwards of 40 gigahertz. Uh, more typically, they're about 18. 18 is the K band. KU is under that, and KA is above that. Um, got all kinds of space there. We use satellites from the aircraft that we communicate to, with in the company I work for, GoGo, that puts internet services on airplanes. And, you know, we go um, air to ground. The cell towers that we use go 894 to 890, 849 to 850 and a half to, for uplink and downlink is 894 to 895 and a half. Each one's one and a half megahertz wide. When we go up to satellites, we can get 100 megahertz for channels. So if you have people on, on board the airplane that want to do streaming video and got a lot of passengers that want to do that, the space is there. On the channels down below, if you want to do that kind of traffic handling, not just get your emails and do simple browsing. Uh, we have to do what's called traffic shaping. We throttle your, your bandwidth and it just takes a while for your buffer to fill up before you can see anything flow in real time. Okay, so now we have the is FM the, concept. Is that why the data rate is limited in HF frequencies and then things sequentially gets bigger because of the bandwidth? Not only data rates, your bandwidth. 
you operate on the HF bands, which are, you know, the 160 uh, meter, 80 meter, 40 meter, all the ones up to 10 meters, everything up to 30 megahertz, your signal is typically 5 kilohertz or less. In fact, if you run single sidebands, you're expected to run typically 2.2 kilohertz bandwidth. And that's all you need. And you get up to 2 meters, you've got an FM signal. Now it's deviating, so you're going to have all that uh, twice the deviation plus twice the deviation rate space. It's 5 kilohertz, 5,000 hertz instead of, it's more than double what it is. Now you could say, why isn't it more than that? Because you're up that much higher in frequency. And the answer is, um, it's the FCC's thought that all you're sending is voice, not music. It would be very kind if you would just uh, limit your bandwidth. You'll still have the features of FM. You just won't have the noise rejection that you would if you had a wider deviation. Uh, there's wideband FM allowed if you go up high enough in frequency, but uh, that's not that's not where it's at. You open the UHF band, you can operate at 12 and a half kilohertz deep uh, bandwidth spaces. So your deviation can be higher. Um, it just, it's a simple physics of how much space is available. When you were operating packet radio, if you ever did that back in the 70s, your baud rate was 1200 on the 2 meter band. If you operated on HF, it was only 300. You know, like the old telephone coupler. Uh, my modems work. You go up to 1.2 gigahertz, you can go to 9600, and it keeps going up from there. Higher, more space available, higher data rates possible. Television, yes, old fashioned fast scan television was allowed on ham radio. Still is, for those of you that want to play with it. Um, you have to be in the 420 band or above. 432 is the frequency of interest for that sort of thing. Why? Because the dog on TV signal is 4.2 megahertz wide. You only fit a few of those on the band, as it is. Uh, what people do instead is they do slow scan TV. What is slow scan TV? You take an image, a PDF file, really, nowadays, and you turn it out slowly enough. You just let the rate, day rate uh, uh, be slow enough so it fits into the audio space of an HF signal. And it takes about 90 seconds for a color picture to get through. It used to take, uh, for black and white, the earliest robot uh, was the company that made the instruments. I actually own one. Uh, they had a very, God, I can't even think of, of, the, of the size of that signal, but it you know, had to fit in the audio bandwidth. And it would take uh, typically about 30 seconds to crank it out. That, that, that was done uh, over phone lines, too. It still is. It's a thing called facsimile. Think about that. You're sending a graphic image over the phone lines on a fax machine. How does that work? Well, you put the document in and you, hear the, you have to hear all the association take place, the training and so all the, so all the other components of the modem signal latch up. You know, all the sounds that you used to hear when you used to hear them live. Then you sit there for a minute, minute and a half while your document gets you know, shoved through. A little faster now because you can go up to 14.4. But that's not considered a lot. But why is that? Because it's the telephone channel. And the telephone channel is only about 3,000 hertz wide. So they use a lot of compression techniques to dram as much data as they can through that uh, space. But that's essentially slow scan television. You take the image, you scan it, and then you send the data. You turn the data out of, you know, as many bits at a time as you can fit through the channel. Anyway, that's why we have AM and FM. Now there are a couple of other modulation schemes. There's phase modulation. Uh-huh. What's phase modulation? What I said phase is think time delay when you think of phase. When you have a hmm, should I erase here? I'm running the room. I'll erase everything in a minute. And we'll go to the next step where I'm actually going to put a circuit together that will create and decode AM and FM and other similar modulation signal schemes. Um, when you have phase modulation, you have a, a jump in time. Okay, here's your normal oscillation. If there's a phase shift, you go up to a certain point, then you have a delay before you go to the um, next phase, which is to... Um, let me think of how this looks. Yeah, it'll, it'll look like this. You know, you'll, you'll have these time 
shifts in the signal and they jump back and forth. Phase and frequency modulation are related. One is actually the integral of the other in terms of what calculus teaches us about rate of change. When Edwin Howard Armstrong created the first FM signal, it was easier for them to build a phase modulator and run it through a thing called an integrator to turn it into a frequency. Frequency is the rate of change of time delays. Um, they called that the Armstrong indirect method. That's a modulation scheme. It's more often used when you happen to have modern things like the way your Wi-Fi signals are created. It uses a combination of phase, frequency, and amplitude modulation that we talk about as chip encoding, Parker encoding, and code modulation is the general term. Code modulation in its fanciest form is what you do with your cell phone. You curve CDMA. Um, that's a code modulated signal. The TDMA was time division multi, um, multi axis. Uh, the other is code division multi axis. CDMA actually goes through a process where the signal actually happens to have changes in frequency, phase, and amplitude combined together in such a scheme that. Uh, you can actually have a signal that's lower than the noise level, and you can still get it out of the weeds and, and recover it. Um, there's a lot to see to you, I'd love to cover if we had time, but uh, we don't. Let's go and create and recover signals using some of these modulation schemes. Let's figure out how we do it. And once we know how we do that, we can actually put together real transmitters, real receivers, and talk about them. As you can see, modulation is more than just talking, keeping a one.